Good afternoon. Welcome to Omni Bros Live. I'm sorry we're late. It's my fault. That's right. It's my fault for once that we're late because it's my wife's birthday. I had to make sure that the presents got wrapped before I disappeared for an hour. Came down here and made the magic happen on uh, YouTube. So Omni Dog apologizes. And I'm sorry. I apologize, Gio. Sorry, dude. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Apologize uh, to everybody in the chat. Everybody lurking. I'm sorry. It's okay. Every, everybody is comfortable because we're here now. Don't worry okay. about it. <laughs> I'm here. I'm not queer. I'm, I'm half Scottish. Get used to it. That's the chant that they say uh, the, uh, the, uh, the parade in uh, New York. What is it? Mm. We're here. We're queer. We're Irish. Get used to it. Uh, that's, so. the, that's the uh, that's the uh, parade that they uh, the parade chant. I, okay, now I'm rambling. Let's talk about uh, Geo. <laughs> a week in geekdom. How you doing, buddy? Doing pretty well. Happy to be here on a fine Sunday afternoon ready to talk some news items and hang out with the chat and everybody else awesome and i'm omni dog from omni dog's vault and before i forget because i'm all kerflummoxed i don't want to forget our fabulous sponsor instocktrades.com where mm -hmm. you can get i wanted to talk to you about a book that i just uncovered death of the inhumans i just uncovered it i had a big stack of books so i want to talk to you about that later in the show I haven't yeah. read it yet. I got it from InStockTrades.com. Probably up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts probably added 2% to that. It was probably in an order that was $50 or more, and it was free shipping in the United States. If I had a problem with it, I probably got fabulous customer service. And since it came from InStockTrades.com, it came in probably fabulous packaging that I'm sure I sure. reused in some manner. So that's InStockTrades.com, our great sponsor that we really appreciate. We love those guys. They're awesome. We do. I just made, um, let's see, I think I made, <laughs> I, I just, it's too easy to make um, uh, orders from them. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, Friday day, I made an order that included Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Volume 1. Yes. Because, because you did convince me. The Convince Me episode was a big success as far as Geo is concerned because I I went uh, for it and decided to order Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Volume 1. Yeah, I'm happy. With whoever that is on the cover. Who is that on the cover? <laughs> Raphael. Raphael. Yeah. Let's see. There's uh, Wait, don't tell me. There's also... Michelangelo, Raphael, uh, is there, is there, uh, um, think of, think about the Renaissance painters, Ren Renaissance painters. So is there Da Vinci? Uh, first name, Leonardo. Got it. There's yep. a Leonardo. Okay. How many turtles are there? Four. Four. Yeah. Is there a Titian? <laughs> no, you're missing. You're missing my favorite turtle, actually. Oh, I am. Okay, yeah. let's see. Uh, Raphael, Leonardo, There's Michelangelo, or do they call him Michelangelo? That's fine. Um, uh, Bob? Is there a Bob? <laughs> uh, no, no Bob Ross. Uh, um, okay, so D. D. Da Vinci. Yeah. Uh, we already said yep. Leonardo. Uh, D, Doug. Doug the turtle? I don't know. Who is it? <laughs> nope. No, who is it? Donatello. Donatello. Do Donatello. Holy smoke. Now, why yeah. are they named after Renaissance painters? Who named them? Am I going to find that out in this book? Nah. Uh, that was Eastman and, and, and company doing that stuff, but... I, I have no idea. I don't know the origin. Maybe a uh, uh, Tyler can help us out with that, but I don't know the origin of the names. Oh, because when I get into characters, I get into them deep. I want to know. Yeah. I want to know the origin of them and stuff. I, I mean, I'm I'm gonna want to know that kind of stuff. Now I'm gonna look for it. Hold on. Okay. 
let me see what the chat's up to. I do not have the chat up. Are they yelling at me because we were late? I'm so sorry. They are named after yeah, people. They love you. Just has a heart after all. Why is why is that? What's that from? Sorry, what was that? No, I'm just talking to myself because I'm catching up in the chat. Hey, Jess is back. What's up, Jess and Geo? Hey, Lionheart. There's Taylor Brown. And Didi, what is the start time? Sorry, dude. Hey, Jess is back. What's up? Jess and Geo. Hey, everyone. It's cool. Lomity C. Jess has a heart after all, says Jesse. Say what? Uh, maybe because I like. Uh, Maybe because I'm going after um, uh, TMNT. Um, so we do have some news. We do have comic news that we're going to talk about, besides the fact that I'm going to read TMNT Volume 1. That's, that's, um, that's, uh, that's pretty big news that I'm going to read TMNT because I've avoided it for the better part of 40 years. <laughs> I actually have uh, some trivia, uh, or it's not trivia, it's um, I'm connected to the first uh, movie. Um, oh. A fraternity brother of mine wrote the uh, lyrics to the first movie. Oh, interesting. His name, yeah, his name is Bob Bajan. He and I were good friends when we were in the fraternity. Um, he and I worked on, um, I actually, um, he was the choreographer for a thing called Band Frolic where we would put together uh, musicals. They were supposed to be 10 minutes or less and um, all, the, all the housing groups on campus, this is at University of Pacific, is Matt Miranda in the chat. It's my Stockton boy, University of Pacific from Stockton. Uh, the frater fraternities and sororities would participate, and at that time, I was the lyricist. I would write the lyrics to these songs, and Bob was the choreographer, because I couldn't choreograph, um, but I would write the lyrics. Um, but then we graduated, and I lost touch with him a little bit, and the next thing I knew, I read in the Wall Street Journal that he was writing... He wrote the lyrics for the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. Oh, that's awesome. And I think he made Righteous Dosh from it. I can't imagine. That thing sold like hotcakes. Jesus. Yeah, it was like live action, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like guys and puppets. And, yeah. Suits. <laughs> so, so I do have a small connection to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Awesome. I, I found an excerpt uh, where they interviewed uh, Peter Laird, Laird, and he said that um, uh, the name, uh, we had this story about how the turtles were being trained by this rat who had come from Japan and was a ninja master. We thought about giving the turtles Japanese names, but we couldn't think of authentic sounding Japanese names. So we decided why not name them after Renaissance artists? We picked the artist. We were most familiar with it and went with it. So, okay, there you go. I'm neither <laughs> underwhelmed nor overwhelmed with that. I am just whelmed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's a it's a ton of fun. Don't let the fandom and the the thing and the hype consume you. It's it's a fun read. You're gonna have a fun time. I I, I have no preconceived notions whatsoever except what you told me i have no uh the only ninja turtles i've ever read is in the first uh usagi uh, yojimbo story oh, right, right yeah they show up in the first book right yeah that's the only exposure i've ever had to them well um i'm gonna try and find for our next live stream whenever i'm on i think i have a picture with uh, one of the turtles. I'm gonna look for it and see if I can find it and show Have you it off. one here. of the turtles? Yeah, back in 1991, I think. I was really tiny. Ah. Uh, tinier, <laughs> yeah. So if I find it, uh, I'll show it off live. What do you mean next time you're on the stream? You and I are on every stream. <laughs> there wouldn't be well, any streams if it wasn't for you and I. Oh, uh, well, you know, things happen. I don't know. 
I'm just uh, not trying to uh, get everybody's hopes up. <laughs> okay, here's my question about Death of the Inhumans. Mm -hmm. I've read Black Bolt. Let's yeah. see, there were two, two of those, right? Volumes okay. one and two. Um, I read two volumes of Royals, right? Mm -hmm. Where, where does this fall? After, uh, after, uh, uh Royals. So after I read it's, Royals, I can read this? So I can read this Royals, right now then? Yes, Royals and, and, uh, Black Bolt, they take place around the same time, and then, uh, Death of the Inhumans. Okay. Good. I'll I'll skim Royals again so I can get familiar with it, and then I'll read this. Good. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 Because I'm reading uh, War of Kings anyway right now, so I mm. I mean I'm getting my fill of Inhumans. There's Matt Miranda. I was just talking about Stockton and University of Pacific, Maddie. I was talking about band frolic and my years back at UOP and. All, all types of things, but uh, you weren't here, so I don't want to repeat myself because people in the chat will flip out. <laughs> but, uh, um, how, are, how are you liking uh, War of the Kings? Uh, it's good. I'm, I've mostly read uh, all X-Men stuff so far. It, I, I find it a lot easier to read than the previous Omni, the, yeah. the prelude. And I think it's you're the one more. that told me not to read the the uh, extra material in Road to Prelude to Road of War of Prelude to Kings or whatever the name of that book was. <laughs> you told me not to read. I think you told me not to read that because it basically tells you everything that happens in War of Kings, right? Mm, maybe. I, I, I can't remember, but maybe that might have been me. I don't know. Oh, you don't but, think it was you? Somebody told me don't read all that extra stuff. And I'm glad I didn't because it tells you everything that goes on in War of Kings. Um, so I'm glad I, that's in Prelude to Road to War of Kings. Um, the extra back matter is, is not just back matter. It's like a full-on synopsis of War of Kings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so skip it unless you want War of Kings ruined for you. War of Kings, uh, for the most part, I, I like like ninety percent of that book. There are a couple um, tie-in issues or something. I can't remember, like a mini series that I didn't care whatsoever, and it could have easily been torn out of that book. But for the most part, it's a good it's a good read. War of Kings had some stuff that could have been torn out. Yeah, I was not a fan of some of those stories, but the main war. Uh, War of Kings story, that was good. I liked it. So far, I've liked everything I've read. So far. Uh, and I can't say that about Annihilation, which I didn't like anything I read. And <laughs> Annihilation Conquest, I liked uh, a lot more. Uh, Road to Prelude, Road to Quaalude, I liked a little bit. Uh, some of it. I liked it here and there. But so far, I think War of Kings is going to be my favorite because I, it seems a lot more cohesive and coherent. Uh, uh, I am dumb. I meant Realm of Kings. I apologize. Realm of Kings, <laughs> the the end book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry. I haven't really got there. I, I was yet. thinking, it, there, Realm of Kings has a main storyline that's good, and some issues. Um, I can't remember the name, but there was an issue, like four or five issues, that I did not understand whatsoever what was happening and could easily have been taken out. But that was in Realm of King. Sorry, my bad. Oh, okay. I haven't read it, so I can't comment. Yeah, but war, war is great. You're going to love it. Yeah, so far, War is really good. Here's a question mm -hmm. that I can't answer because I've never read just Infinite Crisis. I ordered an absolute edition of Infinite Crisis because it was on sale. Can I read it as a standalone and still enjoy it? Uh, I'm going to say try and read the countdown issue, have a general knowledge of what's happening in the DC universe at that time, and maybe try and pick up the uh, four 
uh, tie-ins that was um, uh, shoot, what was the name? Oh yeah, the those tie-ins that led up to it. Yeah, Ranthanagar yeah. War, uh, OMAC Project, Villains United, and Days of Vengeance. Yeah, know, however you kind of have to read those. Yeah. But every other tie-in, uh, for example, like a uh, Justice League issue, whatever, you don't really need it. You just need to know those things I mentioned. Yeah. I think the Absolute only has the six issues for uh, the Crisis event, and that's it, which is a bummer. Um, Highlighter asks, so Annihilation reprint, nothing to get excited about. Um, if it's on sale, if it's a 50% off sale at in stock trades and you can get it for 50 bucks. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's worth it, but I feel badly for somebody that paid $300 for that thing. Uh, I didn't, I, I mean, I got it a long time ago. I think I paid $60 for it off of Amazon right before it went out of print. It's just not, I didn't find it very interesting. I, I, I found it to be very, I hate, I'm not going to use the word meh because I don't like that word. That's, that's so, that's such a lazy word to me, meh. Um, meh. I, yeah, it's such a meh word, that word, meh. Um, I, it just, uh, it, it was just kind of an average, it was just very average. There was no, it wasn't very exciting. There was really no, um, there was no real excitement to the to the uh, no big effort. Um, it was just very it was very average. Uh, Annihilation Conquest I thought was much more interesting with more yeah. interesting characters. Uh, there were real consequences, but I feel like Annihilation just sort of happened and it was over with quickly. And there were no it was like no big deal and. It all got swept up and everything got taken care of and blah blah blah. I think Annihilation gets better on rereads. Oh, because really? Because when you're first going into it and you don't know a lot of the characters and concepts and stuff, it might seem a little bit dull. And I can understand that completely. When I read it, I really got a kick out of what uh, Annihilus, spoilers, what he's doing. And the Annihilus wave, but uh, I, I can understand your point about the consequences and and, and yeah, some of the characters are introduced and, and aren't necessarily the most exciting representations. Later on, with Conquest, things ramp up, yeah. And the the, com the saga, the cosmic saga, gets a lot better as it goes along. But I, I, I like a, I have a soft spot for Annihilation. It was the first one of the first omnibuses that I ever got when it was when it came out and uh, I, I like it. It's pretty good. Yeah. I think things just get progressively better in that cosmic mm -hmm. saga. Yeah. Um, I just didn't feel. If, if somebody's <laughs> comfortable getting the omnibus, then get it. If not, and you want to try something different, get the uh, trades that came out uh, last year or this year, the complete collections, get those instead. Well, I, I just think it's going to be a lot easier to risk your money now that it's going to be 50 bucks or 65 mm -hmm. bucks or how whatever it's going to be. I don't know if they're going to charge you 125 or a hundred dollars for it. Um, but it's it, the same price. Was it a hundred dollars or a 125 or I mean, I'm looking right at it, but I can't really tell you tell what it was. Um, but I mean, God forbid somebody paid three hundred dollars for that book. I just check real quick. That's that's just too bad. Three hundred dollars for Avengers or Fantastic Four number one by Hickman. I I could almost justify that because Fantastic Four number one by Hickman is a freaking great book. Mm -hmm. I can reread that book and I I'm sh certain that I get more and more and more out of it upon every read. But Annihilation just is almost kind of deflation more than annihilation is just like uh, it's it's 125 125 okay yeah. so it'll be what 6250 or is my math bad 6250 i think so yeah i don't know 
Um, <laughs> Hoopla's a Kristen mo dude. <laughs> Hoopla, you could read it on Hoopla, and there you go. I don't, I can't find Hoopla. I, that reminds me, I got to get back to Travis Gilmer, who asked me how we uh, could possibly get Hoopla in Vir the state of Virginia, which seems to be Hoopla -less, less. We can't find Hoopla anywhere. Um, I don't have Hoopla. We don't either. There's Gabe driving home, uh, checking in on the chat. Gabe, I don't own any shares of uh, Poppy Bank. I wish I did. I wonder if they give <laughs> out uh, some opium with every to every shareholder. Like a free sample? Yeah. Question, Jess and Gio. Have you guys ever read Superman Confidential? It was a limited series from DC. I've heard good things about it. Superman S Confidential. That sounds familiar. Is that a Darwin Cook thing? I think that's the Darwin Cook uh, run. I feel like I have that. Ugh. Superman. Superman. Oh, I may be getting it mixed up with Superman Kryptonite. Darwin Cook and Tim Sale. Huh. Uh, I'm not seeing it in my Superman. I feel like I have it, though. Um, I don't think I've read it. But... I own a couple issues because Felipe, out of all people, uh, gifted me a couple issues so I could read it. <laughs> well, he'd be the one to gift you something Superman. Yeah. I think I have like four or five issues, I think, or maybe, no, like three or four issues of that run, but I haven't read it yet. <laughs> Gabe, Gabe says, I want to go to the poppy banks and make a withdrawal using his nose. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of using your retina to scan thing, they just yeah, just, you know, you use I'd like to withdraw some of my opium that's in my account. A line of a, my my line of credit. Nice line of credit. Superman Kryptonite is Superman Confidential. That's how it's collected. Aha! Then let me go grab it because mm. that is indeed what I have. Then okay. Uh Thank you for clearing that yeah, out, Shadow. Well, uh, okay. That makes sense, yeah. then. DC Comics presents Superman Kryptonite. Oh, that's a cool-looking trade. Like a newspaper. Yeah, and that's how it's in here. Hmm. Cool. Nice. It is how it's presented. Uh huh. And now the to read pile just got a little bigger. Because this, I know I read it when I first got it. And this looks great. And I'm not really that big a fan of Tim Sale's art, but Lois looks great in this. Yeah. Thank you, Shadow, for telling me that. All right. Uh, Kenneth, expect a review sometime in the near future. <laughs> Let me get around to it. Shadow Batman, thank you for telling me that. I did not know that Confidential was uh, changed to Kryptonite. That's interesting. That's how it's presented. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. From the makers of Omnidog's Vault, the Opium Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jess, Matt Miranda asks, will Jess be getting any of the SDCC exclusive pops asking for a friend? <laughs> uh, we still have a lot of reveals because I think it was like 75 pops for San Diego Comic Con. Is that right? And they've only revealed like 30 something. Uh, Joe Chip, that's right. I've got Nailbiter on my to-read pile because I um, promised that I was going to uh, review that for you, and I will. Before the, uh, before the week is over, I'm going to read that. <laughs> and Candy Durley, we, uh, we do have a topic. We're going to get to it. <laughs> get to it. It's news. 
it's news, but we're chatting with the chat right now. <laughs> we start with the chat, we derail things, and when you know we come back around, talk about the news. Uh, that's right. Taylor Brown is saying, Shadow of Batman, Jess and I will have a show for you coming up this Saturday. That's that's right. That's news, is that we're going to have... Uh, every other Saturday on my channel is going to be Batter Day. We're going to have uh, Batman... Taylor Brown and I are going to have a Batman show every other Saturday. One's going to be a live topic... Um, and that we're going to have a, a topic with that's going to be live so that we're going to have a live chat and then the next week is going to be a review of a batman book that's going to be uh, alternating saturdays and then the other saturdays are going to be kristen and i are going to be doing live reviews of books so every saturday for the awesome. rest of your lives is going to be omni dog saturday uh Omni Dogs Vault is going to be live or pre recorded for uh, Saturdays for the rest of your lives. There will be videos on Saturday. That's what everybody needs to know. That's right. Uh, so if you like Batman, we've got Batter Days from uh, the Bat Cave. And if you like book reviews, that's what we've got too. And horror movie reviews. And horror movie reviews. That's right. Every Saturday, Omni Dogs Vault does horror movie reviews with ETL's lovely wife, Jenny. Nice. And the first book we're reviewing is Black Mirror Absolute. So there's the news from Omni Dogs Vault. And the other news stories, Gio, what do we have for news? Is it Vertigo? Uh, Let's do that. Uh, DC is replacing all imprints with age labeling system. So effective, I don't know at what time, uh, we're going to say goodbye to Vertigo, uh, DZ, DC Zoom, and DC Inc. Those are all going away, quote unquote. What, what were uh, they? What was Zoom? That sounds Zoom. like a drug. I think Zoom was supposed to be uh, for uh, for the younger demographics, and Ink was supposed to be young adult for uh, or young readers like standalone novels and stuff. Uh, just you know, more kid friendly content was on those uh, labels, and of course the big one, Vertigo, which which by the way, a lot of people were reporting. Uh, DC just killed Vertigo. Rest in peace. I'm like, it's more of a name change, you know. The books are still going to be published. New stuff is still going to be coming out that is not DC oriented. It's going to have that black label. So it's more of a name change. But people were making it out sort of like this hateful thing. And a lot of people jumped in with angry uh, reactions online and just cursing at DC. How dare they? And then you find out that those people have never read a comic book in ages. So I'm like, we've been following this news story for a while, so I'm not 100% like surprised all of a sudden. So uh, I hated that. A lot of people played into that fear and that anger to get clicks online. I'm, I'm definitely not a fan of that. Um, uh, so you're not wound up about this, uh, this um, age appropriate type of name change. Uh, you're not wound uh, up about it at all. I mean, uh, we. I figured this was going to happen, and uh, sort of the idea was to consolidate everything under just the DC brand, the DC logo. And it's going to be uh, DC Kids, which is ages from 8 to 12. It's going to uh, center around that. They're going to have the main DC label, which will have all your regular comics and superheroes. And then the black label, which will be the former Vertigo books. So it's a simpler, nicer way to compact everything. I'm guessing there must have been a reason, an internal reason for the name change and getting rid of the Vertigo brand. Uh, maybe we're not supposed to find out. I don't know, but I'm not so uh, uh, up in arms about it. The books will still be printed. The legacy will still be there, in my honest opinion. 
Hmm. Okay. Um. I. I don't actually feel like I have enough information to make a judgment on this one. I don't. I. Uh, hmm. I don't. Uh, or. I don't want to say I don't care, but I don't yeah. know how it's going to impact me as a reader. So I'm not sure that I'm capable of getting too excited about it. I loved what Vertigo used to be. I love the titles that came out of Vertigo. I mean, I certainly have a whole bookshelf that's virtually all Vertigo, practically. Um, yep. Um, I don't, I, if it impacts, if, if it impacts it in the way that it takes the oxygen away from creators that were going to create interesting titles like Vertigo was, um, then that bothers me, but I don't know that that's the, the case. So until uh, I, I find more out about that, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting upset about it. I have a quote on one of the news articles from Dan Didio. He said, uh, we're returning to a singular presentation of the DC brand that was present throughout most of our history until 1993, when we launched Vertigo to provide an outlet for edgier material. So is the, I, well, I think I said it earlier in an earlier thing is that I, I think Vertigo just raised everything else up with it so can can dc now present edgier stuff under the dc label if they do then i think it's fine it's not uh, going to bother me if they if if they present edgier uh titles under the dc banner does that make sense do you know what i mean yeah. mm -hmm. um it says on the article, DC Kids is aimed at readers 8 to 12 and would seemingly incorporate the DZ Zoom titles as well as some cartoon-based titles. Then the central label would be intended for those aged 13 and up and largely continue the core DC superhero titles DC is known for, but also the Zoom titles. I, I don't get that. Yeah. Uh, DC Black label will continue, but as an aged label as opposed to an imprint and would contain its more mature material for readers 17 and older. Any already announced Black Label titles would presumably continue under this his label as uh, reprints of older work already announced to be added in, such as Watchmen, Dark Knight Returns, yada, yada, yada. And the pop-up books, such as the, the Young Animal and Sandman Universe, those are going to continue, but they didn't specify uh, I, we all see, we assume it's going to be under the black label, but they didn't specify which label they're going to be printed on. Okay, I'm happy taking a wait and see um, attitude on that. Yeah. Um, I I I feel like DC has. Um, I don't think they're going to. This is going out on a limb, and I'm just. I feel like they're done canceling books. Um, that they've solicited, like that Aquaman Silver Age book, I, Omnibus, is. I think that gets printed. I think that yes. Jonah Hex Bronze Age book gets printed. I, I think they're done canceling because I feel like they have the collected editions department kind of settled now. That doesn't guarantee we're going to get a second American Vampire Omnibus or a second Batman New 52 Omnibus. If we... If we get those, then yeah. I'll know DC has rounded the corner and is settled <laughs> in. Then I will buy those uh, Omnis. Uh, if I see American Vampire number two and Scott Snyder's Batman number two uh, in omnibus format, then I will buy number ones of both of those. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, plus... Snyder has said he wants to continue American Vampire. I'm still waiting on that because it's been forever. So hopefully, you know, all that stuff happens. Yeah. Um. He, he yeah, he sure does have, he's kind of like Jeff Lemire. He, he sure does have a lot of projects going at once. Mm -hmm. 
um, which yep. is fine. He, I, you know, as long as he keeps the quality up, um, exactly. it's fine with me. I mean, the more Scott Snyder, the better, as long as he keeps the quality going. Yep. Um, so there's our DC diatribe for the week. And I'm sure we'll get we're, we're going to talk about this again because it's not done. We still have to see how everything is implemented. So we'll see. Spud Spud CT, how's it going, Jess? I've just ordered Absolute Kingdom Come, excellent choice, and Absolute okay. World's Greatest Superheroes, another excellent choice, on your recommendation video where you've talked about what absolutes you should have. Very good, dude. Nice. I, I think you will be very happy with that. Mm -hmm. Especially Kingdom Come. That's such a great yeah. story. It's and so Absolute World's Greatest Superheroes. Um, the great Adam, uh, Alex Ross art. Great stories by Paul Dini. Uh, you'll be very happy with those, too. Um, actually, Crazy Jane asked a good question. Did you? Is Young Animal still a thing? Did you address Young Animal in... What you were talking about about DC is Young Animal still going to be? Uh, mm -hmm. Is it still yeah, being it, published? It's still being published along with um, the Sandman universe and Jinx World and all that stuff. But okay, they, they don't know. It's not confirmed under which label they're going to be printed on. But yeah, they are going to continue. Okay, that's that's where that kind of vertigo-y type stuff was going, that Milk Wars and Eternity Girl and that really kind of out there yeah. kind kind of stuff was headed for. That That's where it was, was that Young mm -hmm. Animal imprint. Uh, I, I think we need, before we judge, we, I feel like we need to kind of wait and see how it looks. I agree. Uh, Spud CT, abs Absolute Justice, yeah, it's too pricey, but abs uh, Justice is coming out in a deluxe edition in August, and I would uh, wait for that. The deluxe edition is not as big as the uh, Absolute is, of course, but a deluxe edition is still better than any nothing at all, so I would wait and get the Absolute, I'm sorry, I would get the deluxe edition for Justice. Um, I don't know what, um, I wonder what eBay, sometimes eBay has better deals than Amazon, but let's see, uh, you know, I don't absolute justice, Alex Ross. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, it's not a better deal. Oh, there's some heavy prices. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's an absolute justice for 113 bucks from Canada. I didn't know that was so surprising. So Rare Italy import. Something tells me that's in Italian. Mm -hmm. uh, $254. Yeah. I don't think so. Wow. Uh. Oh. Uh. Signed canvas. Wow. $3,000. $2,000. Um... Yeah, no, I think you better get that deluxe edition. <laughs> That's, a lot of That's an awful lot of dosh. Uh, yeah, it looks like it has sold for <laughs> routinely $125, $150. $200, yeah, I think that you'd better get that deluxe mm -hmm. edition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of editions, 
uh, we also learned that uh, Brian Singer is finally out of ah. the uh, Red Sonja uh, movie. He got booted. And Jill Soloway is going to hi uh, is going to and direct the movie. And now, what is so my the, question uh, is, what would you like to see? What would I like to what? I don't know. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll ask in a couple minutes. I forget what the knock was on. What's the is what's the he is uh, is he a sexual harasser? Brian Singer? Yeah. Yeah. Um, a, a serial sexual harasser? Brian Singer was still on track to get $10 million for helming a new Red Sonja film. However, the revived sexual misconduct allegations against Singer eventually forced Millennium Films to shelve the project. Now, according to Deadline, uh, transparent creator Jill Soloway has been hired to direct and write uh, Red Sonja. Yeah, according to Soloway, uh, exploring this powerful mythology and evolving what it means to be a heroine is an artistic dream come true, and is going to take a bold new take on the character. So, I, uh, I wish they'd have Gail Simone be some type of creative advisor oh, for that. That would be great. That would be great. Um. I don't know much about uh, uh, Jill Soloway. What has she done in, in, in the, uh, the Hollywood? Oh, oh, she shares my birthday. All right, Jill, go you. Okay, well, that's all you need to know. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, well, we know what she hasn't done, and that's sexually harass people on a daily basis, <laughs> which apparently Brian Singer has done. Um, so that's good that they got a good strong independent woman to to uh direct a movie about a strong independent red sonya so that's that sounds good now she produced six feet under and of course transparent which she won two emmys for all right oh, okay good. uh greco bully camp yeah jonah hex is getting an omnibus still and i don't think it's going to get canceled i i'm going to go on record as saying it will not get canceled I'm putting my uh, chips where my mouth is or money where my mouth is or something. I'm going it's on record and I'm saying it's coming out. It's not getting yeah, canceled. DC will not get uh, canceled. Jess, is Gail's Red Sonja pretty good? Yeah, it's really good. Gail Simone's Red Sonja is really good. I've only read the first uh, trade out of the three. I think it's three books. And it was really good. I, I I wanted to get the other ones, but now they're coming out with an omnibus, so I'm waiting for that one. Yeah, wait for the hardcover, grab it, and uh, say a little thank you to Omni Dog in your prayers that night. <laughs> Just say thank you, Omni Dog, for Gail Simone's omnibus. <laughs> uh, that omnibus, uh, by the way, is going to be oversized. And signed by Gail Simone. Oh, it's going to come signed? Yeah. I'm reading online, and it says it's a signed, oversized edition. So oh, I don't know. fun. It, I hope that doesn't mean it's going to be a limited run, so I don't want to see people complaining that they can't find it later on. I hope that's not the case, though. Uh, the Jonah Hex, it's Bronze Age. Um it's the beginning, the all-star Western stuff, um, the uh, weird Western stuff, um, wh like weird Western number 10, where he first, Jonah Hex first appeared. Um, so that is um, a good sign because I think if, uh, if it sells even a little well, that means the all-star Western and Jonah Hex stuff by Palmiotti and Gray will then get uh, an Omni itself. A couple of, a few Omnis. That mm -hmm. um, Jonah Hex run, yeah. all-star Western could be one Omni and then Jonah Hex could be two Omnis, um, in my opinion, by awesome. Palmiotti and Gray. So if the Bronze Age Jonah Hex sells well, I think we could see some New 52 and pre-New 52 um, Jonah Hex 
um mm -hmm. he's come out um yeah what to so is american alien out of print because of landis what's going on with max landis any is he in the news yeah max landis has like eight or nine accusations of uh, uh -oh. abuse and sexual misconduct and a whole bunch of uh, uh oh he caught a hashtag ago. huh and i think like yeah it's like eight or nine accusations or something like that oh um, that's too bad i really liked american alien that was a good book yeah um, oh my god i don't want to read all this stuff it's a long story about Max you can find Landis? it online yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's something about uh, it says law firm uh, suit against Max Landis after abuse reports, and it just goes into detail. Uh, two days after a Daily Beast story detailed allegations by eight women against the screenwriter, and it goes into detail about that stuff. Wow, that sucks. How do you? How does someone still keep? behaving that way <laughs> when I don't know this isn't the 1950s anymore I mean you can't mm -hmm. I don't see how you think you can get away with that acting that way I mean besides the fact that it's wrong I mean mm -hmm. you, you just you can't get away with that kind of behavior anymore well, how I does someone try and get away with that Maybe these people get blinded by the the power that they acquire being in that industry that they think it's okay to do these horrible things. Um, I, I don't know. It's got to be a mental for sure. Wow. Okay. Well, but that counts as news. Yeah. <laughs> I have that book in my Superman cube, and now I'm like, eh, why do I have it? <laughs> you what now? The American Alien book? Yeah. I have it on my Superman collection. Now Now I'm looking at it, and it's like, uh, all right, it's there. It's like a big I asterisk. Know. I, I, picked it, I picked that book as one of my favorites of 2018, I think. I, it it may have even crept into my top twelve. I love that I think book. So you made a. Mm -hmm. I I'm, I may have it may have slipped in there because I really like that book a lot, and now I'm now am I am I uh, filthy by association? I don't think so. I I tend to, I tend to separate the two things, you know, but we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of writers, J.J. Uh, Abrams was in the news because the Spider-Man countdown that Marvel was doing, for some reason they started at number four instead of number five, which weirded me out. Like, what would you start? Let's do a countdown on something important with number four and then three. I'm like, what happened to number five? That's usually what people do. Hype it up. Wait, five, what are we talking eight. about? A countdown. The the Spider-Man story with J.J. Uh, Abrams. Uh, Marvel was doing a countdown promoting something that was going to happen with Spider-Man. And um, they started posting on social media like uh, a cobwebbed number four and then a three, two, one. Oh, they and then started at day four instead of day five? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like... Why would you do that? That is so bizarre instead of number five. <laughs> but uh, anyways, it was revealed that J.J. Uh, Abrams and his son are going to write a limited series, a limited Spider-Man series. J.J. Uh, Abrams and Henry Abrams are writing a new Spider-Man title scheduled to debut this September. This five-issue series will be drawn by Sarah Picelli, colored by Dave Stewart, and it will feature a crazy new villain, uh, Cadaver, Cadaverous. 
So that's all. That's that's that. Uh, I'm so excited. Wow. I can't believe it's happening. Said Harry Abrams. Thanks so much. And they did a full announcement video on their website or whatever. So I I had no idea J.J. Abrams wrote comics. It's that's brand new to me. <laughs> um. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't know his son wrote comics either. I think that's probably the that's probably the most blatant act of nepotism I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> but his his son also, I I can't tell if his son goes out of his way to look nerdy or just is nerdy and owns it to the <laughs> max. And I think that I I think he owns his nerdiness, and so I I I'm kind of rooting for him. He he's yeah. he's a nerd and he's proud of it and I'm so I'm rooting for him. He owns it. He's excited about it. His he's got a famous dad. He wants to write comic books, and his dad's going to. I, actually, I'm okay with it. I've talked myself into it. They got a great artist uh, in Sarah Pacelli, so uh -huh. she's awesome. Yep. Um, you got a famous dad who's going to write a comic book with you, and you're going to write a comic book. Uh, why not? I actually I've talked myself into rooting for this kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would uh, do it too. I would do it too if I were him. I, and yeah. I would embrace the nerdiness, and I would uh, I'd go full on. Yeah, good for him. I mean, he could be <laughs> sitting in the back of a limo drinking champagne and snorting blow off a hooker's butt and instead he's writing comic books good for him i oh, like it oh yeah i like it a lot awesome <laughs> I right, good for him i'm rooting for him i'm gonna buy that even though i don't buy floppies just to support this kid what's his name henry yeah henry, you go yeah. henry go henry <laughs> go you do you i'm a big henry abrams fan now <laughs> Apparently, people were upset because of this, but not out of the nepotism. They were upset because it was a number four, so people thought they were going to reveal a Fantastic Four crossover, and then oh. it was like, no, nope. <laughs> we're going to do a miniseries just called Spider-Man. Um, also, uh, let me look up the link, but there's also a Spider-Man news. Uh, that Eric Larson is going to write a comic book, uh, a Spider-Man comic. Oh, he is. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me look it up on my uh, Facebook because I forgot to bring it for this show. Um, I think is Martin Conway and Bagley. They're going to do a, a series, a Spider-Man series. Jerry Conway and, and Mark Bagley. Yeah. I see Shadow of Batman. Put that in the chat. Oh, thank you. Um, I think it's called... Oh, come on. Stupid website doesn't open. Well, whatever it's called, whenever I do find it, yeah, they're making a... Uh, they're making that... Um, uh, like I think it's called going big or, or something like that amazing spider-man but solid this is eric right larson there. three epic mm -hmm. wait so who's doing the writing Let's see if i can find um uh yeah hold on a second <laughs> let me let me get the real the the, the actual I, but it's supposed to be Larson and Conway with uh, Bagley doing the art work. Okay, so Larson and Conway are doing the writing. I don't have a problem with it. I'm just trying to nail it down. Great. Uh, oh, all right, all right, all right. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Larson Bagley Conway going big. Uh, Amazing Spider Man going big is the title. Class Spider Man creators Eric Larson. Uh, yeah, they're returning September. 
Spider-Man go big uh, as part of Marvel's 80th anniversary celebration. So, yeah. So, wait, who you, you sort of... Your connection got pretty. janky there. Who's doing the writing? <laughs> Larson and Conway. Both of them. Larson and Conway. Okay, good. The, got uh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Got it. <laughs> uh, but I am definitely going to check that out because Bagley is my favorite Spider-Man artist. I support everything that he does. Um, he's done something recently. What's he done recently? Has he done Spider-Man recently? Uh, I think he worked on Scarlet Spider, and I'm not too sure, but I think he worked on something Venom-related, too. Venom-related. Okay. I feel like I've heard his name mentioned with something recently, but I can't think of what it was. Maybe I read something. He did. Uh-oh. Oh, there you are. Uh, yeah, my internet is acting up. Sorry. Uh, I think, it, yeah, I think it's, I think he worked on, on the new Venom stuff for a couple issues. Pretty Alonzo says, Spider-Man life story with Chip Zdarsky. Okay. Mm. Life story. Okay, good. Okay. I Because I, I thought I had heard his name mentioned recently with Spider-Man or, so, or some character. Um, okay. Awesome. Yeah, Mark Bagley, I like his art a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And do we have any other news? I think that's all I got. I'm looking online to see if I missed anything, because I tend to post on all of these subgroups of the uh, Facebook page, and I'm usually the one sharing all the news. So I don't. Let's see if I missed anything. But I think that's it. Uh, any pop related news? Any action figure related news? Did you pick up the Dragon Ball Z box set? Well, we're. Oh man, I I want to, but I have no space for uh manga. Like, it's limited to a couple series, like Berserk, One Piece, um, uh, My Hero Academia, stuff like that. But I wish I could get them. I wish I could have this gigantic manga library, but, you know, space my, is limited. My buddy Gabe is going to get me that uh, Mattel Batman uh, Ooh, yeah. San Diego Comic-Con limited edition uh -huh. uh, action figure with the four different Batman from the Silver Age. Uh, and mm -hmm. Mattel made it so hard to get i don't i mean gabe had to pre I, what i wanted to do was just get it myself and have him have it sent to me but no they you had to pre-order it then you got to go check in at the mattel booth yeah. at san diego then they mail it to you at your house so gabe has to pre-order it then he, he's going to be at san diego anyway so he's going to check in at the booth. Then they're going to mail it to him at his address. Then oh he sends God. it to me, and I will pay him back, plus the shipping. Wow. Um, so we're not trying to run a scam here or anything. It's just that I I want the set, mm -hmm. and that's the only way for me to get it is through Gabe um, yeah. getting it for me. Um, but, man, as soon as I saw that, I was so excited Rainbow Batman, Negative Batman. Um, what other? Uh, there was one other Batman. There was regular Batman, and then the uh, zebra looking one. Is that the negative one or the zebra, the polka dot? Uh, not polka dot, but zebra. Yeah, zebra <laughs> Batman. Yeah, those are like the three most famous uh, outfits that he wore during like the late 1950s when he when he had to. Um, he had to change outfits for various reasons, and they give you the reasons in the in the box set. It comes in a really cool box, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know. It would it just that just pulled my nostalgic heart right out of my chest uh, and made me crazy. 
So I really I, appreciated I mean, Gabe and, doing that for me. Oh yeah, Gabe is our MVP here. But really, Mattel could have done so much better with just like, hey, just we have a couple sets and you can pre-order on our website and then a couple more sets that are going to be on the show. And that's it. And you don't have to go through this really irksome process of just ordering and then picking it up and then registering, uh, uh, getting all that info and then sending it to your house. It's that's a, it's such a drag. Yeah, I think that um, Hasbro with its Marvel Legends thing, they have them on sale at San Diego, and then whatever's left over, mm -hmm. then they release it to the general public, right? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that, there's yeah. a particular Monday at 9 a.m. where you can, you and then it goes live, and then you can um, order it. And Tyler Blunt, exactly. that's how I became friends with Tyler Blunt. He, he like PM'd me and, uh, randomly and said do you uh, are you interested in this uh marvel legends set and this was back in 2016 i said uh, i sure am and so that's how we became friends and um but it's but it's super simple i mean if you if you really want the uh if you really want it and you're at san diego you can get it and if you're lucky enough to be right on time you can get it online um afterwards but i mean to pre-order it yeah. and then go to check in at san diego and then have to sit at home and wait for it and that's just i don't know that that seems like an awful lot of hoops to jump through yeah yeah hopefully they'll get better at it that but you know mark farland toys is getting the license so who am i kidding uh they're, they're not going to be around much longer with dc stuff anyways <laughs> Well, you've got my hopes up because almost every single one of my figures is uh, I'm more of a DC guy and almost all of my figures are, are Marvel figures because the sculpts are so good. The facial oh, sculpts yeah. are awesome on these um, mm -hmm. Marvel Legends and the Mattel uh, DC sculpts are just not good. Um, they don't look yeah, anything are... like human beings at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They are straight up garbage. Let's be honest. <laughs> they, they, look, they look terrible. Horrible sculpts. They have really weak articulation. They just don't look pleasing enough for uh, adult collectors. People uh, from your age, from my age, that like to get this stuff and, and collect all these characters from our childhoods and nostalgia and all that stuff. They just do not look uh, qual uh, like quality material. Uh, Hasbro has been killing it with their Marvel stuff, and they're like they use like this photo real tech stuff on on the characters' faces. That even though uh, it's, it's based off a movie or a comic, it looks like it's supposed to. Unlike the Mattel stuff, which they just look hideous. They look like bootleg toys sometimes. Look at and this. With, uh, this is so. Yeah. How mm -hmm. awesome That's, she is. Yep. That looks awesome. This is my favorite I figure. I mean, this is amazing. This was like a $20 mm -hmm. figure. Yep. The attention to detail on this if, is amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then you look at what they do with the uh, DC Comics license, and it looks like uh, McDonald's uh, kit, kit toys. <laughs> I'm, I'm really upset about that because I really wanted uh, like a cool Aquaman figure and, and I don't know all, all the magic heroes that I like but nope. Thank God that uh, they, they, uh, McFarlane is, is getting that license. Well yeah I agree. I mean I have a whole row of Harley Quinn books here and like a lone Harley Quinn figure that is really lame. And that's and, and I think that's not even Mattel. I think that Harley is um, from the DC collectibles line. Yeah, and it's Maybe. not really even that good. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they need to work on that. <laughs> I, I mean, I should, there should be like nine Harley Quinn figures right there. Mm hmm. 
Yeah, Carl, I do like that silk figure a lot. <laughs> it's just so cool. Yep. But yeah, I'm really excited that you're gonna get that Batman set. It looks pretty badass. I know. Especially I'm super excited. Packaging looks like um, like a comic book, uh, like a long box or something that you open and it, it reveals the giant bat logo. It looks pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is really good. It's, I'm pretty excited. Um, do you want to take five minutes and take questions from the chat, and then we can? Yep, yeah, sure. Uh, well, Geo's your man to ask this question. Anyone read Invincible? Geo In, has. It is Kirkman's best material. Forget about anything else that he's written because it's not that great. But Invincible is fun, it's action-packed, and it has solid artwork from start to finish. I I loved it so much. I cannot recommend it enough. It has its weak points here and there, but overall, the story, you know, I, I think he, for the most part, stuck the landing and, and ended the series in a interesting way, and I do recommend it. It's like this blend of, uh, uh, and I did a video. It was actually one of my first uh, comic book reviews uh, with Gabe, and we talked about how it was very action oriented, but it also infuses a lot of uh, uh, anime and, and manga influences, stuff like uh, Dragon Ball Z and all that stuff, where it's very action heavy with uh, expressive characters doing pretty shocking thing. So I think a lot of people will like Invincible if they give it a shot. Someday I'm going to do a read through of all 12. But after, yeah. I think after I'm done with War of Kings and Realm of Kings, I'm going to do that Ed Brubaker, Captain America read through. <laughs> yeah, Riley will be upset. If you don't do that, read that's through. the latest recommendation. So, I mean, he got me super pumped up to do that. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's the only Ed Brubaker stuff I haven't read. Yeah, you can uh, review it on your channel. I know a lot of people will uh, will like it. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a, those are um, impressive looking books. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, Jake Forgerelli is baiting us. He wants to know what's the greatest comic ever written. He already knows my answer. Uh, shoot. I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> That's a tough question for me to answer because I want to say an Aquaman book, but at the same time, there's so much stuff out there. Uh, I'd love uh, Craven's Last Hunt over at Marvel. Um, Irredeemable is pretty good as well. And boom, uh, pretty good. You're talking about great. the greatest comic ever written. <laughs> it's pretty great. It's pretty great. There, that's better. Uh, Hellboy is one of my favorites. Um, I can do a top five easily. Uh, Hellboy, Invincible, Craven's Last Hunt, Spider Man. Um, um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Aquaman New 52 and something like uh, Kingdom Come or Infinite Crisis or something like that. But, but yeah, there's so much out there that I'm not comfortable picking a singular story mm. because, you know, oh, and DC New Frontier. Yeah, I feel like an idiot. I left that out. New Frontier <laughs> is also pretty great. <laughs> it is. Jake is partial to uh, Watchmen, which is his um, is his right. He doesn't Watchmen. seem to be open to any other uh, answer, which is what? sounds like Jake. <laughs> uh, DC New Frontier is also awesome. Secret Six is great. Spider Man: Death of Gwen Stacy that is a heartbreaker. Batman Odyssey, get out of this chat. Uh, he, uh, nightfall. Um, Come on. I know that's that's right up there with Batman Odyssey. Are either of ETL says are either of you getting that X Men book coming out next week? Uh, yeah, actually, I am. 
it's a pass for me. Not a huge X reader, so yeah. Um, and I just had that's Eve of Destruction that's coming out. The hardcover. Um, yeah, I just had uh, Riley, God bless him. I took pictures of all my X Men hardcovers and all my X Men uh, trade paperbacks, and they were a disorganized mess. And he organized them uh, on. Um, wow, Israel Gaten just gave us five bucks. Oh. Great content, underrated channel. Thank you, Thank Israel. You. All right, I'm gonna. Thank you. Um, I and and uh, Riley was kind enough to organize my stuff on uh, his iPhone and on the uh, the notes section, and sent me uh, the correct order for all my X Men stuff. So I appreciate it, Riley. And there's a place now in my uh, collection for the Eve of Destruction hardcover that's coming out. But uh, now I have everything uh in order um x-men wise wolverine and the x-men i wonder where that's supposed to go i kept that with the wolverine that's probably supposed to go somewhere else i have no idea but you have a lot of x-men books i do <laughs> just you have revolution by claremont that is on order i just ordered it because riley noticed that i didn't have it Peter M. seems to hate it. Yeah. Um, it's not necessarily um, supposed to be a good book. Anyone got their Batman Omni Volume 2 yet? I ordered it. The Morrison Omni. Uh, I haven't got it yet. But it hasn't arrived. So. Yeah. No, I haven't got it yet. Mm -hmm. There's one more book actually after that. Volume three is going to be the last uh, Morrison Batman Omni. Uh, is that going to be the one that includes Batman Incorporated? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that should be. That should include the Batman Inc. one shot. The pre New Fifty Two Batman Incorporated and the New Fifty Two Batman Incorporated. Ah, uh, okay. Now I have the. Um, boy, you're quick on those. Um, I have. Um, I have the uh, Absolute of Batman Inc. So, do I need to pick up the Omni? What does that include? I don't know. I have to. <laughs> I would have to go get up and go get it. Let me check. Uh, I don't think you need it, but if you want the books to match, yeah, you might want to get. Let me see. Um, Batman Incorporated Absolute Edition. Uh, actually, I think the third omnibus is just going to be that absolute in omnibus form. Oh, it really? Says, yeah, it says Batman Incorporated 1 through 8, Leviathan Rises 1 shot, then Volume 2, 1 to uh, 13, and Incorporated Special number 1. So I think those are the contents of Omnibus Volume 3. I don't... Yeah, I think that's it. So you're probably good. That'd be good. Mm -hmm. I would like to not have to spend, you know, more than I have Double. to. Double, triple dipping. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I kind of need the Morrison Omnis before I can read my Tomasi, Batman, and Robin Omni, too. Although I could just... I, I know what Worlds in Ink means. I could... Uh, I could just read it, but I'd rather read it in order. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, you're, you can read it, but at least this, the first six or seven issues uh, have nothing to do with anything else. So you can read those. That'd be good. ETL says, do you guys use any beard oil or beard balms in your facial hair? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
That is a very strange question on Omnibros Live, but we love those type of questions. No, I do not. Uh, no, I do shampoo my beard every morning when I shampoo my hair, but otherwise, and I trim it every morning, but that's a... Yeah. You, you would probably have to ask Riley, is he's way into maintaining oh, that yeah. luscious... <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised Riley hasn't gone like with a handlebar or something. <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, okay, here's a great um, question for Jarelli asks, what's the worst comic of all time? <sighs> he votes uh, for Trouble okay. by Mark Miller. Mm. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I haven't read the ones that you hate, so I can't oh, my vote gosh. for those. I've avoided them because you told me about <laughs> that. Um, mm. I, you know, Sam, there's a special place in hell for that Savage Highway book. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Using That's, rape that way, and then yeah. the the rapey way, the way they use rape in Hit Girl Two by Mark Miller. Um, there's I hate that book because of it. Um, I hate um, I hate the uh, Kevin Smith Batman books, Widening Gyre, and um, uh, what's the other one called? Um, um, I forgot the name. Uh, cacophony. Cacophony. Uh, I've poured root beer on astounding Wolfman. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've read a little bit of of that, and I can guarantee you that is pretty bad. So, I agree. Yeah, Batman Odyssey also atrocious. Mm -hmm. All Star Bat Batman. But All Star Batman has that one redeeming panel that's so funny even though it's awful you know what are you retarded i'm the goddamn batman well no that still doesn't yeah, redeem pretty it. iconic <laughs> it is iconic but that just shows you how far his descent into it, madness really is holy terror that's really Virginia. yeah that does have everything great art. holy terror that was really awful um, that was just outright yeah. racist. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Dark Knight Strikes Again, that was truly awful. Yep. Uh, out of the Aquaman books, Sword of Atlantis is not that great. And uh, the Keith Giffen run from the 80s, that was awful too. But everything else is pretty good in my book. Uh, let's see. Kirkman's Ant Man was awful. Uh, that's the irredeemable Ant Man. Yeah, or something? yeah, yeah. That was, that was pretty lame. Kirkman's Outcast was pretty good. I it wasn't awful. It just wasn't very original. I thought I, Outcast. I, I read I read like the first trade and that did nothing for me. Yeah. What was the book that um, with the fairies and stuff that you did not like? Oh, Beautiful Darkness? Yeah, that one. That's the one that I hated and uh, Omar loved. Yeah, I poured root beer on that. <laughs> um, you know, for Jarelli, that's interesting about Cerebus. Because Dave Sims' politics bled through into Cerebus, his treatment of women um, actually came through onto the page. Um, it, his politics came, his heinous treatment of women came through onto the pages of Cerebus, and that's what made it unreadable for me. Yeah. 
Outcast is better than Gideon Falls. Chris M, you you've OD'd. Wow. You're 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 out of your ever loving mind. I can't <laughs> I cannot believe that you just said that. You you're saying that just to get a rise out of me. <laughs> No, I'm, Highlighter, I'm not going to read that uh, Superman by Frank Miller. I'm afraid that sounds like it may ruin the character forever. Yeah, I'm not interested in that at all. But if people like it, then good for them. Wow, Chris M., you're serious. Okay, dude, different strokes for different folks. It's all good, buddy. It's all good. Peace and love, peace and love. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Uh, every uh, there's a book for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't for the chat. Don't don't get upset if we hate on a book or love a book that you hate. It's all good. We're yeah. Just having some yeah, we may show initial shock, but in the end, uh, that's what's great about comics is that everybody loves a certain book. Mm -hmm. And there's a book out there for you, and that's what's great about comics. You can, there's always a book for you that you like, and it doesn't matter if anybody else likes it or not. If you like it, then you should read it. Mm -hmm. Anyone want to read a comic that will make your soul feel empty and black? Hit, oh. hit me, hit me with it, Forgerelli. What is it? <laughs> God, please don't name a comic that I love. <laughs> what? What's he going to say? Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm dying to know what he's going to say. Josh Simmons' House. House. I don't know that book. I'm going to have to look that up. Skyward, Skyward's great, Mister Awesome. Stop that. Josh I have, Simmons. I have the the um, the first book. Can't wait to start reading it. Oh, uh, you'll like it a lot. Mm -hmm. Josh Simmons. Josh Simmons. House. House. It's expensive. Uh -huh. Yeah, that doesn't look like something I would check out. And if he says it's bad, I'm staying away from that. Wow, weird. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit out there. House by Josh Simmons. Gene Simmons' son. His son? That's what uh, Chris M just said. Is that the 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 kid that got accused of uh, plagiarizing a manga? Uh, I don't know. I haven't heard that. He uh, apparently I don't know if it's him, but he uh, copied the Bleach manga. <laughs> he he doodled over it and claimed that it was his original stuff for a comic book that he was working on. <laughs> what? <laughs> took, he took the original book and copied over it and claimed it was his yeah, book? He took a couple panels and then recolored everything and changed a few uh, details and claimed it was, uh, it was original artwork from a comic book that he was working on. Uh, 
Forgerelli says not Gene Simmons' son. He uh, he also does not like Kiss. Forgerelli. Ah. Gotcha. Jess, have you read *The Complete Low Life* by Brubaker, and is it worth picking up? Uh, I have it upstairs. I should uh, check it out. That was the very first thing I ever read by Brubaker. Um, Forgerelli says, I don't think Josh Simmons is a plagiarist. Uh, it, Nick Simmons. Sorry. Nick, Nick Simmons. Simmons. I just checked. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I remember liking Complete Low Life by Brubaker. Carl Ann, I liked Complete Low Life. It's completely different, Brubaker. I think it might be the first thing he ever did, I, I feel like. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. Okay, we apologize. We so, uh, Jess, I don't know about you. Yeah, you need to get going. Yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say. I, I think I gotta wrap it up. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you to the chat. You guys were great. Um, thank you to everybody that's been uh, watching us and thank you to InStockTrades.com where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. In the United States, if you make an order over $50, it's free shipping. Fabulous customer service, fabulous packaging. That's InStockTrades.com. Thank you to everybody that took uh, part in this uh, wonderful chat we had and we had a lot of fun with the news. We had a lot of fun with uh, uh, a lot of stuff that we talked about. We learned a lot of stuff. We learned that Superman Confidential is really Superman Kryptonite. Mm -hmm. So that was good to find out. Yes. Uh, today's Sunday. We have a show tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Yep. And um, where we will be going over uh, hauls, reads, and previews. Mm -hmm. That is tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And Gio, where can they find you? You can subscribe to my channel if you'd like. Uh, uh, comics, manga, anime, all that stuff. It's called A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. And you can find me, Omnidog, on Omnidog's Vault on YouTube and on uh, Omnidogs underscore vault on, what's that thing called? Instagram, that's right. Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. So thank you on behalf of all the Omnibros and In Stock Trades, I say thank you for watching and peace and love, peace and love. Bye everybody. <laughs>